Hello and welcome to today's session. I hope you're all doing amazingly well from whichever part of the world you are watching or listening. Today, I would like to talk about the four things you must avoid if wellness isn't going the way you had hoped. The big question here is, how do you stay on track with your wellness concept when it isn't performing the way you thought it would be performing? We all know how it is to create a fantastic wellness concept, to have everyone on board, to have that romantic notion and vision of something that is working so incredibly well. And we're all excited about it. However, when we enter into that valley of despair and into the river of misery and things aren't going the way we thought they would be, which is only normal, then it's so easy at that point to kind of lose ourselves. And this is where I have seen myself, my past self. I have been there, done that, got the T-shirt. And I also see my clients do that. That's why I think it's incredibly important for us to be deeply aware when things don't turn out the way we expect them to turn out. And normally we actually are incredibly surprised when things don't work out the way we had hoped or planned. And that seems like something that shouldn't have happened. However, if you look at every single concept that has been rolled out, it is only normal that you would say the vast majority of them don't get it right, right out of the park. You really, really have to fine tune something. You will rarely get it right the first time round. So hoping for things to go as you had planned or expected is actually not very realistic. The reality is that things will go wrong or things will not quite pan out the way you had thought. And the key here is not to do what we normally do. What we normally do as wellness leaders is that we fold under pressure. So we see our owners who probably have invested an interesting sum in rehauling the wellness concept or creating a wellness concept. And we had on paper promised set numbers that quite, that aren't quite getting fulfilled. Then obviously the owning company will put pressure on your GM and the rest of the executive team. So when your GM is under pressure, your director of finance is under pressure, your team is perceiving that pressure. It's only normal that when you find yourself in this situation, you think, oh my God, I need to do something. And this is the critical point where we actually go down a very slippery slope. And this is what we do that gets us to go down that slippery slope. We look at the treatments that aren't selling well. For example, what we do is we offer them at a huge promotion, hoping that someone will buy. So it's a huge discount and we run promotion out of, after promotion. Or we get another brand that's so called now is the most trendy brand out there. Or we renew certain members of our team. In effect, what happens is we become reactive. Now, we all know that if someone did not buy the treatment at full price, it's highly unlikely that they will be buying it at a lower price. It's not the price that hinders the sales. It's either the client does not get what that treatment is or your team does not know how to sell it, or even many times this happens, our team doesn't enjoy doing that treatment or service. There's nothing wrong with a particular treatment. It's just that we either don't know how to do it, we don't know how to communicate its benefits, or the guest does not see the value. It is not rocket science. Cutting down the price, putting a huge discount at it will not help sell. And I think we all 
know that. We've all been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Discounting will not help sell more. Bringing in a new brand will not help sell more. We will eventually get past that honeymoon phase, past the novelty of a new treatment and product, and then we will encounter the same problem. So the trick here is to truly stay actually quite strong when things aren't going as planned. And I strongly recommend you to actually plan for the inevitable. And the inevitable is that this wellness offering will not perform the way you thought or something won't quite go as planned. And that's actually what happens in real life. So if you actually plan for something that is practically inevitable, you as a wellness leader will be able to manage upwards. So you will be able to explain to your GM, give them the security they need that, trust me, this offer is going to work. I appreciate something isn't working and this is what I'm doing to fix the little areas that aren't working. And that's all sometimes that is needed. They don't need more. But the problem is we as wellness leaders put the pressure on ourselves. And that is when we end up abandoning our own concept. The concept we fought so hard for at the beginning. Because we're so disheartened, because we just fold under the pressure, because we just get shell-shocked that things have not quite worked out the way we had planned, that we end up abandoning ship, abandoning the concept, or completely overhauling it. And we do no one any, we don't do anyone any favors when we do that. So my, what I recommend when we are actually in this stage where things are not going the way we planned, The first thing is to actually zero in on what isn't working. It's not that the whole concept isn't working. It's normally a tiny part that hasn't quite taken off. And we go into that tiny part, we evaluate what's working, what isn't working, and what can we do differently, not better, differently. And we go back to the drawing board again until we fix or fine tune what isn't working out. You do not abandon your concept. You do not renew your team. You do not add a new brand. That does not help. You do not decrease your prices. Instead, you look at what isn't working. Fine tune it until it is working and then rinse and repeat because the harsh truth is that what is working today might not work tomorrow. So your wellness concept, when it actually becomes an implemented offering, is a constant work in progress. We're going to have to constantly iterate it in order to ensure that you're not abandoning your entire concept. You're just fixing the small areas that aren't quite working. And in stage five of my essence model, navigation. So let me get this right, if I've even got that right. So we've got expectation, story, system, execution, and navigation. So stage five of my essence framework. Navigation. So navigation is also known as your course correction framework, and it ensures that you stay on track with your big picture goals and you don't get sidetracked by a trending therapy, lower sales than expected, or your team not quite grappling with the concept or your guests not seeing quite the value of each of the treatments. So In this stage, what we do is we evaluate. We look at each part, each element of the concept. We see what parts are working, what parts aren't working. And if they aren't working, what can we do differently? And it's trial and error at the end of the day. We can't be scared of trial and error. 
And rarely is it changing the treatment. It's always the communication around the treatment, ensuring that the guest sees the value in it, your team sees the value in it, and you're actually delivering what you promise. Because sometimes we say A, but we end up giving our guests B. And that's not only us, that is any business in the world. And that's perfectly okay. But once we know we have promised A and we're giving B, and B is definitely not what the guest wants, we are in a much better position to ensure, okay, we're not going to give them B, we're going to make sure we're going to give them A. And that is our job as leaders. When things get tough, that is when we actually zero in on our concept. We are 100% loyal to it. We are constantly course correcting. And if you've heard my previous sessions, I talk a lot about the emotional cycle of change. Now, in the beginning, we're all at the top, Mount Stupid with this uninformed optimism. But as soon as we implement our concept, we are entering the valley of despair and in, we get right into the weeds of the river of misery. And no one absolutely no one, irrespective of how experienced you are, you don't get to escape that. But here's the difference between those leaders who actually go out to transformation and those who actually give up. Leaders, when they find themselves, the successful wellness leaders, when they find themselves in this valley of despair and they actually get into the river of misery, that is when they start getting stronger. That is when they give their GMs, their owners, and their teams the reassurance they need. They stay steadfast to their concept and they fix what isn't working and they do that patiently. It's not about blame. It's about what exactly aren't we nailing? So instead of getting into blame, we get into a state of curiosity really looking into what is working, what isn't, and what we can do differently. And it is really that simple. When things aren't quite working the way we planned, we become curious, we investigate, and then we do see success at the end of the road. But what we can't do and what we all end up doing, trust me, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt several times, we effectively abandon our concept. Because things didn't work out the way we expected. And that comes as a surprise to us. And if there's something I've learned in 22 years in this industry and having my business 16 years, I can assure you, nothing goes as you plan. Very little in life goes as you plan. And, you, and you know, the secret to success is not actually having every nailed every single thing. The secret is knowing how to navigate through situations when things don't quite turn out the way you expected. And then you actually steer whatever isn't working back on the right track. And you will find that it tends to be the smallest of things that need fine tuning. It's never a big, complicated, complex process. It's sometimes a small little thing that then has a domino effect on the entire concept. And then you see things start working amazingly. So today I wanted to talk about the four things you avoid when your wellness concept isn't going as planned. You do not bring in other brands or remove brands. You do not add or remove treatments. You don't hire or fire your team members and you don't price dump. You don't discount the lowest selling treatments, hoping that they will sell and thinking that it's the price that is ensuring that is actually the stickler, the, the roadblock to your guests buying. It never is price. It's always the value and the benefit they see of what you're selling. So I hope you found that useful. And if you are in that stage where your wellness offering isn't quite performing the way you have thought, when you initially thought, 
and you have your GMs, you have your GM, you have your executive committee, you have your owners, you have your team, slightly anxious, know that it is very, very normal. Of course, they're going to be worried. It's only normal. But of course, things aren't working the way you expected them to work. That's also normal. And you as a wellness leader need to plan for when things don't go as planned. And this is when you need to rise up to the occasion and say, guys, this is only normal. Of course, things don't go the way we planned. But you know what? I'm not going to make that an excuse. I'm going to find out what isn't working together and we're going to fix what isn't working. And it tends to be the small things. We're definitely not abandoning the concept. Because if you do, all the money that was invested into the wellness offering, you're literally flushing it down the toilet. And you're going to repeat the same cycle again with another concept. And that serves no one. We don't learn anything from that. Okay. And on that note, I wish you all a beautiful day ahead. Take care now.